To this service and those that have joined us online, we acknowledge your presence in the precious name of Jesus. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that new every morning is his love towards us. So every morning that you see yourself awake, you see yourself alive, just know that God has a different plan than what he had yesterday. So you ask him, Lord, perfect your plans, your ways in our lives in the name of Jesus. Throughout this month, we have been looking up uh, at service, stewardship, the giving life, sacrificing, dedicating your life to the service of God in every way. When we talk about stewardship, we, are not, we don't just only mean financial stewardship. Uh, dedication of your time is stewardship to the things of God. Dedication of your, your resources, your talent to the things of God, then and from where we took our prophetic focus, he said, so you shall serve the Lord your God, and then he will bless your bread and your water. And I want you to know that just like offering our stewardship is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. And there is nothing that you do for God that goes unrewarded. That's why I was telling them, he said, be movable brethren, abounding in the Lord always, for you know that your labor of love will never be in vain. We don't serve God in vain. God is not a man user. God is a rewarder God that anytime we serve him, we are sure of his reward. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to look at the blessings that accompany a life of service. Blessings that accompany a life of service. Giving life, giving provides access to having all sufficiency in all things. When you are a giver, you are giving out your talent, you are giving out your skills, you are giving out your time, you are giving out your finances. It brings you into a life of all sufficiency in all things. You see, at times people think that uh, when you talk about the blessings of God, that there is a, a way that God blesses some part of you and doesn't bless the other part. No, the blessing of God is encompassing. The Bible tells us that the ark of the Lord was in the house of Obededon for three months and God blessed everything. Everything. The blessing of God speaks on when you come under the blessing of God, every aspect of your life begins to prosper. Everything about you begins to prosper. That is that blessing. The Bible says that blessing make it rich and add no sorrow. So it's not the blessing that will bless you here and you're sorrowing on the other side. No. So when somebody begins to serve God, when somebody begins to consecrate their life and dedicate their life to a service of God, what happens is that God begins, they begin to abound in all things, in all sufficiency, in all things. Because what happens is that it's a seed time and harvest time law. And when you plant a seed, that seed does not just bring out what you put into the ground. There are mechanisms that God has set in place that if a seed, a, a grain of corn goes into the ground, it, it will just produce and board, and then in the harvesting, you might harvest five years of corn. Five years of corn from a grain. So these are mechanisms that God put in place, and that is what multiplies the earth. And that also affects us in our doings. That is why it's very dangerous to sow evil, to do evil. Very dangerous. Because it's a seed. It becomes a seed. You will harvest it. And you, you're not going to harvest it in the quantity you brought, but you're going to harvest it in multiplied form. So everything you do to man, everything you do in your life, that is why you must be very careful how you live your life. Because you, you, you are provoking a mechanism that God has set in place on the earth for the earth to keep multiplying. Praise the Lord. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 19, 
He said, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving. Now, giving and receiving. But you only. He said, for even in Thessalonica, you sent and once and again for my necessity, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. He said, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit. Because it is the gift that brings the fruit. Now, if you want to abound, then you must have something to sow. There is it's a, it's a full hardiness for any farmer who has not planted something in the ground to be rejoicing for harvest. To be, to be expecting to harvest something. You have not planted anything. Now, what am I saying? No matter how poor you may be, you know, you see, some people always want people, ah, let, let somebody give me, but you don't give. You will not abound in all sufficiency because it's a law. Anything you throw up now will come down. It's a law. It's a universal law. No matter where you are, as far as the face of the earth is concerned. And there is also law of sowing and reaping. He said now, he said, I'm not concerned about what you are giving, but I'm concerned because that is the only way that you are going to receive. He said, concerning giving and receiving, because it is the giving that provokes receiving. He said, so I'm not careful, I'm not concerned about what you are giving to me, but about what is going to, the fruit that is going to provoke into your accounts, because it's a law. He said, indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things which you sent, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And then he began to speak. And he said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Now, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 6 to 11, we are going to be looking at it in NLT. He said, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seed will get a small crop. A farmer who only plants a few seed will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. He said, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully you see at times you may be giving or doing things for the sake of the kingdom and you are murmuring you are complaining about it it's, 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 it's not useful because God will not accept anything from you that you didn't give willingly. And that's why it's wrong for me as a pastor to cajole people into giving. No, it must, it, must be of, it must not be of necessity. It must come, you must decide within your heart. I was teaching on Wednesday, I said, what God wants to you is what you use to honor him. What God wants to you. Because when you want to honor somebody who means something to you, 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 you sit down and think what you want to give to that person. You sit down and think how you want to honor the person. But when it comes to God, we, we think that because we don't see God, because we think that God is invincible, that all these things doesn't matter to God. They do. They do. They do. And that's why Jesus was telling them, he said, he said sow your seed in the heavenly places. Let your treasure be counting in the heavenlies. We are nothing. So God takes account of what we do here on the earth and how we honor him. How we honor him. He said, honor the Lord. What is God to you? What does God mean to you? How do you honor God? If God is the one that you Treat anyhow. That is your value for God. That is what God is worth in your sight. 
So he, said, he was telling them, he said, your giving, your service must be willingly. Because that is where it pays. Not grudgingly, not reluctantly, not out of pressure. Praise the Lord. And God will generously provide all your need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. That is called all sufficiency in all things. He said, you will have all that you need and plenty to share with others. As the scripture says, they share freely and give generously to the poor. They, their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God, is in, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. So it is your not giving that brings luck, not your giving. So he said, when you are, when you become a giver, when you continue to sow, what happens is that you continue to have more so that you can become what? More generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So you touch a life. Praise the Lord. Now, but mind you, the covenant of giving and receiving does not, goes, it goes far beyond financial returns. It goes far beyond financial returns. Because anytime we hear give, we think it's only financially. No. It goes beyond, far beyond that. Financial returns. Your giving can bring some other things. Remember a time God was teaching me about giving. He said, why do you think in the other world, in the other religion, you know, or even with unbelievers, the hidden, there are certain things that may be going on with somebody. I don't know whether they do it these days. They, they, you see some people, they do what they call salaka. They just gather people and give. He said, do you know why they do that? And they may be passing through some difficulties, but the, the, the prescription will be give out. And they might gather little children. I think we ate some of those rice then. You know, the one they put, cook and put in a tray and bring out with Fanta and everybody will gather. You don't know why they are, what you are eating. You understand? So it has a way of breaking things out of the life of people. So when we talk about financial uh, still watch, we are not just, it goes far beyond financial returns. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first. The blessing of God does not only make rich, it does not add sorrow. It doesn't add sorrow with it. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God was telling Abraham, he said, I will bless those who bless you, and I will cause him who causes you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So there is a blessing reserved for us. Your family, there is a blessing reserved for your family. All the families of the earth shall be blessed in Abraham. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 8, how shall I cause whom God has not caused? Who shall I cause whom God has not caused? And who shall denounce? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? No. If the blessing of God is upon an individual, it's a recipe for causes. 
the blessing. So when you carry a blessing, because the power of blessing is superior to the power of causes. When you provoke the blessing of God, it neutralizes the cause. And that's why God was telling Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. He said, when you do these things, he said, you have put yourself on the path of prosper, prosperity. And you will have good success. He didn't say, you all your enemies will die before you succeed. No. He said, you will have, he said, when you do these things, you have set yourself up for success. Good success. Good success. And may I tell you, not all your enemies will die. Some of them God will keep alive because he's ready to prepare a table before you in their presence. He said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. So when you are praying, die, 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 and some of them are not dying, just relax. There will be the people who want to spread your testimony. Hallelujah. Number two, giving avert causes and plagues. Giving. Avert causes and plagues. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered bond offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelt a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again cause the ground for man's sake. Although the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Why the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Now, what provoked God, it was the giving. It was the sacrifice of Noah. And it's not that man repented. No. He said, even though the imagination of the man still remains evil from the days of his youth, but me, I have repented, I will not do this kind of destruction again on the earth because of what I have what perceived from the sacrifice of Noah. So a curse was broken. Remember at that time that God has already caused the earth. The earth was already caused. To only bring tons and thistles for a man after hard labor. You see that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 18. Both tons and thistles shall bring forth for you, but it was the sacrifice of Noah that God smelt and has a repentant heart and repented in his heart. What did Noah do? You see, when Noah was entering the ark, God instructed Noah to preserve the creatures, male and female, male and female, male and female. So what it means that what Noah did was a sacrifice unto the Lord. Because any bed that he takes means that they are, that one has gone into extinction. Because there is no way they're going to what, produce again. Anyone he puts on that altar, finished. So God said, ah, even though I ask you to preserve these things for posterity, and then you have the mind to do sacrifice with it to me. That was, that was the thing. So it was a weighty sacrifice. And that was what touched God. And said, only this, only this is what you have. And that's why anywhere you see sacrifice, God is always provoked. So if somebody tells you the, what, the amount you give or the, 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 the weight of your service doesn't count, is a lie. It's a lie. Naturally, if somebody sows a, an acre and another person planted in 10 acres, you don't expect their harvest to be the same. You don't expect their harvest to be the same. He that gives sparingly will also 
reap sparingly, and he that gives bountifully. So it's, it's, in, it's in measure. That was what affected the intent of God. Then we see again in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 25, Israel came under a plague. And David inquired of the Lord, and then the Lord responded to him, Now what did David do? And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded their prayers for the land, and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. A plague. People were dying. You see, it's not everything that prayer will do for you. It's not everything that prayer will do for you. There are certain things that your seed will do. There are certain things that your seed will do. Not everything that prayer will do for you. Not everything. Now, I am a pastor by God's grace. If my car has a problem, I take it to what? To a mechanic. What do I do to that mechanic? I pay them. I give them money. They fix my car. I return. Right? If you're challenging your health today, you go to a doctor. The doctor, you give the doctor money, he treats you, you return back. Now, that is how it's also with your money, with your givings, with your service. It's not everything that you pray for. There are certain things that your gift will just open away. The Bible says that the gift of a man make it room for him. It will just open a way for you. And then that is it. Now you might be wondering, why is it that some of these billionaires that are not born again, why do they give? Why do they give? What business has been gate in malaria that is killing people in Africa? He has no siblings there. He has no brothers and sisters there. He's not even born again. But every year he pumps millions of dollars of his money into that place. The man said, he said, I like the principles of Jesus, but I hate the man Jesus. Because his principles work for me. We are teaching uh, principles of success in the Bible school. You see, I say, you see, the, there, are, there are what is called principles. Even if an unbeliever follows principles, he will succeed. He will succeed. He will succeed. You know, you might now be a lazy believer who is waiting for a prophecy that is hanging on the air. And then you will, you will what? You will do what? You will be in penury. Why? An unbeliever who understands the principles that make it for success begins to walk towards it, and you see the person prospering. Now, if you count the first 10 people, the richest 10 people in the world, I don't think none of the, any of them is born again. Why are they the riches? There are certain principles that makes you successful. That if ordinarily you apply, you just become success. But you see, the one, one of the things that has deceived us in the Christendom is that we, we believe so much on, hey, God will do it. There are certain things that you are to do. Then God will do his own. Now, so God gives some of us business idea. We are still sitting on it. Business ideas, we are still sitting on it. We, it, it we, we don't want to leave our comfort zone. We don't want risk. But you see other people taking that risk, and before you know, they are, some, they are something else. They follow the principles of sources. So what David did, cut off the plague. God heeded. It wasn't prayer they prayed. It was a sacrifice. 
they offered to God. And God hid dead. And then withdraw the plague from Israel. Number three, you are giving them powers for divine health. For divine health. You are giving them powers for divine health. You remember a woman that died in the house of the apostle called Dorcas. What raised that woman up was her giving. Her good works. What was raised her up? She wasn't even dead. She, wa she wasn't even ordinarily sick. She was already dead. But her givings raised her up from the dead. So your giving can keep you functioning normally. Your givings can keep you healthy. Now imagine that uh, I have 50 people depending on me for school fees. 50 people depending on me for school fees. If anything happens to my health, God will, God will be looking at, if something happens to me now, what will happen to these people? He will have many people banging on his door. He will have prayers bombarding heaven. For that simple, he will decide to keep you. To keep you. Because of the good works that you are doing. And that's why some people are unkillable. You can't kill them. Because of what covenant practices that they are into. That can arise as a defense when they are challenged. In Psalms 41 verses 1 to 3, it says, Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. In time of trouble. Trouble that will swallow other people. That person that is given to the poor, deliverance will arise for him. God will step in and say, no, not this one. Not this one. If something is, is to, be, to happen to somebody today, will heaven have anything to count on? If something is to happen to me today, can heaven say, ah, this one? No, no, no. We will lose. We will lose. He said, blessed is he who considers the poor. He said, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. He said, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. The Lord will preserve the person and keep that person alive. You see, some of us, you see, $50 alone can pay somebody's school fees in Africa. $50. That used to buy burger. Can pay somebody's school fees in Africa. And then whenever they need that, they will be saying, God, thank you. God, thank you. Say they will be praising God because of your work. I see this church today sponsoring widows. 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 You think that God will, will just turn his face the other side? No. Those people now, they, they, when they, when they remember, you see, he strengthens the faith of people. You see, a God all the way from America found some people that don't know me, who I am, and, and then they are putting food on the table for me and my children. He said, God will deliver him from trouble. God will preserve him and keep him alive. Spread your tentacles of good works. It doesn't take much for us here to be of help to people, most especially people over there in Africa. It doesn't take much. You can look around you. You can see people that are suffering. Just setting $50 aside from your salary every month. It will not kill you, but it will provoke generation. Now, I'm going to show you what happens to your generation by the covenant practices that you engage. What 
One of the things that I know is that what I do to affect people, I, 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 I capitalize on it. Now, if, if somebody has uh, any kind of sickness and uh, I'm being used to pray for that person, I, to me, I count that sickness out of my life, out of my family, out of my generation. Ephesians. Now, okay, let's finish that place. Let's go to verse 3. He said, you will not deliver him to the wills of his enemies. And he will be blessed on the earth. He said, that person that considers the poor will be blessed on the earth. Not when you go to heaven. No. On the earth. He said, he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. No. You will not deliver him to the wills of your enemies. Your enemies will look at you and they say you belong to a higher court. Because everything they will plan, God will frustrate it. He said, God will not deliver you to the wills of your enemy. Your enemies will not determine what happens to you and what happens to your family. Because you what? You consider the poor. He said the Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. You will sustain the person on, you will not let go of the person until help comes. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord. Whatever he is, whether he's a slave or free. Whatever good anyone does, may I complete that scripture? Whatever evil anyone does, he will receive the same. The same. The same. Because it's a principle, seed time and harvest time. Seed time and harvest time. Seed time and harvest time. Number four. Giving guarantees divine protection. Divine protection. Divine protection, Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. You will be protected. May the name of the Lord, God of Jacob, defend you. You will be defended. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. May he remember. May he remember. There is a book in heaven called the Book of Remembrance. If you read the Book of Revelation, you say that a time came when the when the just men made perfect. They were crying unto God for fulfillment of something that God has said. The Bible said a book of remembrance was opened. A book of remembrance was opened. And God has to make a dispatch based on that. He said, whatever good anyone does, God will reward him back. So this can bring protection to you. Your givings can bring defense. It can bring deliverance out of trouble. It can bring strength. It can send you strength. The day you are challenged. Number five, giving secures longevity. Your giving secures longevity. Longevity. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20 to 24. Isaiah 65, verses 20 to 24. He said, No more shall an infant from there live but a few days. Nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. He said, For, for the child shall die hundred years old. Child. That means at the age of hundred, you are still a child. At the age of hundred, you are still a child. He said, But the sinner, being one hundred years old, shall be accursed. Then shall 
They shall build houses and inhabit them. You will not die at your prime. You will not be for another to inhabit. You will labor and eat the fruit of your labor. He said, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. So all the works of your hands, you are not going to leave you until you enjoy them. You will long enjoy the works of your hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. Your children won't be a source of concern. Won't be a source of concern. You see, at times you might look at your children, you feel that the devil has captured them. I yeah, know. You can't have any one of them. Hmm? Because the time is coming by the prince, by this principle, they're still going to bump into God in the near future. Because of the deposits and the threats, the trends of these things, they, 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 you have orchestrated their, 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 the possibilities of them to bump into God. So when the devil is mocking you, thinking that he has lost, you have, you have not lost anything. Devil, you can do all that you can do, but you will not have them. And that's why you see children that have gone wayward, gone away, all of a sudden, one day, without any ministration, no preaching, God himself will go and hijack them and bring them back. Because there is a promise on the head of the righteous. There is a covenant on the head of the righteous. So when the children want to give you heart attack, remain quiet and be praying. God, this is your promise concerning me. He said the seed of the righteous shall be great on the earth. So your, your children has no other business than being great. So don't join the devil to destroy their future. They may anger you and want you to cause and do kind of thing. Tell the devil, if you finish, return my child. Because you can't have him. You can't have her. When you are done with all you are doing, return my child because the glory of God is upon their head. I think that is a word for somebody this morning. He said, for they shall be descendants, for they shall be the, the descendants of the blessed of the Lord. Descendants of the blessed of the Lord. Mm. And their offsprings with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Descendants of the blessed. That's who your children are. Descendants of the blessed. The blessing of God upon your life triggers down to your generation. Trinkles down to your generation. The blessing of God upon your life. Exodus 23, 25. You shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water, and we take sickness away from the midst of thee. No one shall suffer miscarriage, nor be barren in your land. He said, I will fulfill the number of your days. Longevity is a product of service. Longevity. I remember David O'Irebo, Jr., Say one day he was going for early morning prayer. He doesn't know what happened. He lost, in early morning, in America here, he lost control of the car. And the car was zooming to go and hit a rock. He just said, God, it is you I'm going to serve. God, it is you. He didn't know how that car came to a stop. It is you I'm going to serve. The car just stopped. Longevity. Number six. Giving a 
engenders supernatural fruitfulness. Supernatural fruitfulness. You see the example in 2 Kings chapter 4, 7 to 18. The Shunammite woman with Elisha. A woman whose case has been closed. Barren, though rich. He looked at the servant of God and told his husband, he said, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Why not we make a play, create a place for him? I notice he passes here all the time. Let's make a room. Put a table, a lantern, and a reading, you know, desk for the man of God. Say, so anytime you're passing, please feel free to come and relax here and rest, and then continue your journey. That was how barrenness was broken in her life. Supernatural fruitfulness ensured. Number seven, giving secures the destiny of generation yet unborn. It secures the destiny of generations that are yet unborn. Children that are coming after you. Your service you are giving to God secures their destiny. So don't think that you're wasting time. You see, there are some trees that are producing today. The people that planted them are the generations gone by. Cocoa, cocoa plantation, I heard that before they start producing, before you start reaping, it takes years. Maybe the people that planted them as gone is their children that are now harvesting them. So it secures the destiny of people yet unborn. It secures the destiny of the people yet unborn. What you sow. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. He said, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandment. He said his descendants will be mighty on the earth. The descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. His righteousness endures forever. So don't think that what you are doing now, you are... No, no. You see, some of the services some of us are doing. The devil may want you to believe that it's a loss. It's not. It's not. You are putting, it's like somebody who is putting money into the account. I remember one time God taught me about this principle. I've came to Nigeria. I have came. To, uh, I came to America without my family. So one time when I was going, I was going back. I announced to them say I was coming back. So my wife, you know, was trying to do a lot of things. You know, prepare for my return and all that. You know, that miss your husband for quite some. It wasn't even up to a year. It just a year and a few months. So she went to market to buy. She said she decided this American man we need a new plate to eat. When he come, because I don't know how he has Americanized now. So, so she went to gather to buy something. So, unknowing to her, she walked into one of our church member. When I was in Nigeria, one woman called Mrs. Omonudo. She sells wares and all that. This, uh... so she walked there, and the woman said, "Ah, that's all right." He said, "Take everything you need." He said, oh, "I want to buy place." You know, he said, take everything you need. Now, why did the woman do that? My wife didn't do anything for her. But she just remembered me all of a sudden. She said, ah, take everything you need from here. So that is what, how your children will bump into the mercies of God, the, the goodness of God on your account. On your account. So don't think that you have wasted your time. No. He said the descendants of the righteous shall be mighty on the earth. 
He said, wealth and riches will abide in their house. Wealth and riches. Wealth and riches. You see, just as an evil man provokes causes for his descendants, so a righteous man provokes blessings to his generation. To his generation. Because he's seed. And it abides by the principles of giving and receiving. Sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. I've encountered one guy that came to America. All of a sudden, not that he's doing so much thing, but all of a sudden, he's, somebody can just see him and give him $12,000. Another person can just see him and buy him a car. I, I say, what kind of human being are you? I say, what kind of human being are you? I say, you, you are not even holy, you know, righteous, you know, to say that you are fervent, you are praying and all that. I, the, the life of the guy, I didn't understand. And he would come, he told, he told me, say, I was just, somebody just called me and said, send you a account number and put 3,000. I said, ah. I said, do you know the person? He said, no. They just called somebody home. And said, now I began to look. I just went to and Google the father. I will just put the, the last name, the, their last name into Google. And Google, the, and I saw who the father was. I said, okay, no problem. I said, okay, no problem. So my confusion ended. So what he was reaping, because I, it was obvious to me that what that guy was reaping was not what he saw. It was too clear to me. This thing, this guy is reaping, he didn't merit it. I want to know where did he come from? How come? Then when I traced the father, I now know, okay, it's the seed of the father that is reaping the harvest. Is the seed of his father that is reaping the harvest. Likewise, evil men. That's how they heap causes for their children. By what they do. Evil men. They, they think that they've gone free. Maybe they still died in wealth. They are rejoicing. All the evil I did didn't catch up with me. Oh, I'm sorry for your children. Because it will catch up with them. He said, he said, the blessing of the Lord in Proverbs, he said, the blessing of the Lord, I think Proverbs 3, 23, he said, the blessing of the Lord rests in the house. Not on the righteous, but in the house of the righteous. So you can provoke blessing upon your house, not just on your life. Some of them may, will be privileged to meet you while here, but most of them will rest in your house. And you are not the only one in your house. You are not the only one in your house. Your children are in your house. Their children will be in your house because it's a generation thing. That's why even we as parents should be careful the kind of seed we sow. The kind of seed we sow. We should be very, very, very careful. You don't want to leave a liability to your children. All that we care should be, should be we should vow, let no cause, cause, that is present in your family as a believer that you can notice now. Let it not, let it not pass you and step into your children. That should be the resolu resolution every one of us should make. Let, let it not step past me. No. He said, me and my wife, we decided we will deal with every cause in my family. We will, we will finish that cause and make sure that it, it doesn't proceed further. How can I now be born again? Then when I finish, then my children will go and suffer what I suffer. Eh? Then I carry Holy Ghost. And then they will go and suffer what my father suffered. Then I carry Holy Ghost. No, my entry into that line they should be able to block up the bloodline, the front lines in my, general, in my bloodline. That's why you're a Christian. You can't watch it. He said, uh, okay, he's, he's just be, he has been going on. Uh, their father, he was just the same. We learned that their great father, and then you are not doing anything about it. You see some people in their family is divorced. You should be able to break that thing. Break it. 
think I've shared this testimony when we are getting married. Because we are born again. I wasn't a pastor then. <laughs> but I said, uh, you know, everybody that has married in my family, they have a child outside wedlock. I said, no, it won't happen here. No, that, that is not the word of God. That is not the word of the Bible. That uh, we'll finish everything, wed everything before we what? Then devil. Hey, it was, I never knew what was working in my lineage until that day. Then devil began to strike. Began to strike with all kinds of things. All kinds of demonic sicknesses. To the extent, I think either, was it 30 days to our wedding or something? I, I, went to, I went to see one guy where they directed me to. The guy looked at me. He said, I need 230,000 to treat you. He wasn't a medical doctor, you know, all these traditional people and all that. I said, sir, where will I get that kind of money? I said, I'm planning a wedding. He said, is your life more important than the wedding? He said, is your life more, he said, look at you. He said, is your life more important than the wedding? He said, because in two weeks now, you'll not be able to, you'll be peeing on yourself. You'll be pooping on yourself. I said, me? I said, no. And when that night, God gave me, God gave me a secret. I carried my tight booklet. My tight booklet. That was what I carried. Because we used to have tight booklet. I carried it and said, God, if this thing they say you rebuke devourer is truth, rebuke this one. I put it on the head of my pillow and slept. That was how that thing left. You know, when I waited, after we waited, it was then that my brother's wife, who has five children, six children, realized that she has not been wedded in the church. She has not had a wedding. Three people wedded in my family after that. I mean, they, they were already married. Don't allow what is working in your family to pass you and get your children. You, you, you have failed your generation, if that becomes the case. You have failed your generation. If after you seeing this is, this is a trend, demonic occurrence in the family, and then you allow your children to experience the same thing, you have failed them as a father. You have failed God as a believer. Everything to wage, you should wage, use yourself to wage war and say this thing, you end here. You don't cross further and deliver your children. There are a lot of us, there are things in your family. Some of us are not even careful enough. Spiritual sensitivity to know. This thing is a trend. This thing is a trend. And be able to do prayer of inquiry and find out why is this so in my family? Why is this thing moving in my family? And be able to arrest that move and that seed of Satan. Some of them are seeds that have been sown by the generations gone by. You should be able to uproot it. You should be able to uproot it. You see, there are some certain people that people die in their family at a certain age. People die. Once you read that age, as you die once you're from that family. You know what happened? So devil goes at that junction to wait every descendant of that family. He stands at that junction waiting for them. Once you cross and come there, he kills you. So if he spots you coming, he's counting. They are coming. They are coming. And then all of a sudden, somebody gets born again on the road. Do you know what happened? Jesus carries like a suit like this, which is called the coat of righteousness and puts on you. Your case has become different. By the time you are you're getting here, devil will look at you and say, it's not the one. He said, ah, but it's not that person I saw. No. That's what makes you different. You, you, just, you just pass. Because you are wearing something, he can't recognize you. Because when you become a believer, your family has changed. We are of the family of God. So for the devil to still wait for you at that place, and even though he saw you coming, and still recognize that you are the one, then there is a coat that is missing. You didn't see it. He should be able to miss you. You know what he said? Somebody missed target. He might have seen you coming and say, okay, uh, Peter is coming. Peter is coming. He's coming. Okay, he's getting close. But by the time you encounter Christ, 
there is something that happens to you, both physically and spiritually, that when you get before the Satan, he will, he will not recognize you again because you are putting on the righteous. You know, righteousness is a gift. It's a gift. You don't pay any price for it. It's a gift from God. He gives us. Holiness is what we work out with the righteousness. So I'm not talking that you be holy. I'm talking the righteous, getting the gift of righteousness from Christ. That is a gift he gives by his death on the cross. And then covers you. And as he covers you, then that is when the holiness begins to work out. By that seed of righteousness, the holiness begins to work out inside. The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7. The righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. After him. After him. There is blessing that is following your generation. You will land on your children. There are blessings that you have provoked in your life. It will land on your children. The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Number eight. It triggers the flow of divine favor. Giving triggers the flow of divine favor. Triggers the flow of divine favor. Psalm 102, verses 13 to 14. Flow of divine favor. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Flow of divine favor. Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Number nine. Giving secures all round rest. 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 Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. All round rest. Philippians 4, verses 15 to 19. All round rest. You enter into rest by your giving. Let's rise to our feet. The blessing that accompanies a life of service. The blessing. There are blessings. Let nobody make you think that you're wasting your time serving God, consecrating yourself, and devoting yourself to the service of God. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything that men are dying for. I want you to ask the Lord, Father, baptize me with the grace to be faithful in your service. To be faithful in your service. Baptize me with the grace. A faithful man will always abound with blessings. A faithful man will always abound with blessings. Lord, grace to be faithful. Grace to be faithful in your service. To be a man, a woman of integrity in my walk with you. To start on the path of righteousness. Lord, give me grace. Lord, give me grace. Lord, give me grace. No matter how the devil try, Lord, I will not build up destruction for my generation. But my generation through me will be blessed. My generation through me will be blessed. My generation through me will be blessed. For the seed of the righteous shall be great upon the face of the earth. God will receive grace. And Lord, this morning I speak. On behalf of everyone represented here. On behalf of every family represented here. If there are seeds that are still manifesting, oh Lord. Evil seed, evil harvest. Lord, I cut them off this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. From first third, second, and fourth generation. Anything that is still speaking, evil plantations, Lord, we come this morning by the blood of Jesus. According to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Lord, we decree, let them be cut off in the name of Jesus. Let them be cut off in the name of Jesus. 
And Lord, this morning we ask, Lord, if there are seeds, righteous seeds, that have been sown by our generation that have gone by, that we are yet to reap, that have not surfaced, that have not manifested, Lord, I decree this morning that their book of remembrance be open. Amen. Let their book of remembrance be open. Amen. According to your promise, O oh Lord, Amen. that we will reap what our ancestors have sown, the good seeds that they have sown. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Let's package our offering, our tithe. Anything you have brought before the Lord to honor him this morning. Let's honorable package them. As you are purported in your heart, not of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. To package the seeds, You can give bear zeal, or you can give through the church to give, uh, text to give, by using the number 209-215-7744. And please, if you're giving with your card, make sure you write all the details. And if you're giving check with checkbook, with your check, please make sure that you sign appropriately and write also the number in words. Make sure you write also the number in words. So please, let's make all this, uh, all this, uh, let's cross check all these facts and make sure that we are in order. And if you have done that, please, I want you to lift up your seed and begin to speak. Begin to speak to the seed in your hand. Begin to speak to the seed in your hand. Begin to provoke the blessing of God. Lord, I have come to honor you because you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the defender of your people. You are the provider, Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you are the healer. Lord, I decree with the seed in my hand, let every good thing, Lord, be provoked on me and my family. Let the blessings of righteousness follow me and my family. By the seed in my hand, let the devourer be rebuked. Let the devourer be rebuked. Let the devourer be rebuked out of our midst, in, out of our resources, out of our finances, in the name of Jesus. Lord, by the seed in our hand, let the windows of heaven be open. 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 Father, for every title here, Lord, we decree showers upon them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. We give you praise and glory. In the precious name of Jesus, you may cast your seed. Lift up your hands if you have a physical envelope so that the ushers will 